And finally it was that night. And I finally found myself once again standing out on the beach, looking out to the moon. Were you waiting long? I turned and found her standing next to me. I wasn't really expecting you to be here. It's rare that I get to see someone the second time. Hey, I said I was going to be here, didn't I? You did. I have a type of guy who keeps his word. When I say I'm going to be somewhere, I'll be there. Besides, a guy would have been crazy not to come back to see you again. Or did you not hear? Or did you not hear what I said? I left you in an awful hurry last time. You left me. I didn't get a chance to ask your name. Mary. It's Mary Harper. Well, Mary Harper, it's good to see you again. After almost an entire month. It's good to see you too. But for me, it feels like we've been together only yesterday. I didn't exactly pick up what she was saying here. So I just said to what I was saying before. I think it was the same way for me. I spent an entire month thinking about you. I'm not sure if that's exactly the same, but that's sweet. I didn't know what to say after that. And so I didn't say anything. Instead, I simply motioned down the beach and we started walking together down the shore. It wasn't long before Mary broke the silence. I, I told you a little about my family, but I haven't asked you about yours yet. What's your family like? When I'm on the island here, I live with my aunt and uncle, but back home I live with my mother, father and sister. My sister is she older or younger? She's two years younger than me. Do you get along with her well? I thought about how to answer this for a second and decided that honestly, honesty was the best policy. Not really. We fight like cats and dogs. At this, she gave a gentle laugh. What do you fight about? Oh, it's never about the same two things. Put the two of us in a room together for a few hours, and all of a sudden there's something, and we're at it again. I was pretty sure I didn't want to keep on, keep going on, but how my sister and I fought all the time. So I needed to find a way to get out of talking about it. How did you get along with your sisters? For a second, I regret asking that question. Remember how she nearly broke down last time she spoke about her family. But this time she's happy to talk about it. My sisters and I we were like the best of friends. We almost had to be since our house was so small. Until I was seven, we even slept in the same bed. But we did everything together. We had to do chores. We would all help. <laughs> we would help each other out, and we got it done in half the time. Did you play together often? We did. Papa built us built, built us all a dollhouse. Mama made us all dolls. We would play play with them together. We would play house, Karen would be the father, and I'd be the mother, as would be our daughter. We would sing and make each other laugh. I haven't laughed like that since. Well, since, since we last met the father's. La la la. La 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 la. I heard that wistful tone in her voice, and I decided to drop the subject. We started off again, walking down the beach. As the night went by, we talked about many things. To be honest, I, did, I don't really remember exactly what we said. But what's saving me are the sensations. The smell of the salt in the sea air, the sound of the waves hitting the shore, the way the moonlight made her skin glow, the feel of sand as I tripped on a rock and fell, the warmth of Mary's hand as she reached out and helped me back up. Are you right? I think so. The sand was soft. I'm glad. What did you trip on? I think it was a rock or something. When I turned around where I fell, there were rocks there, enough that it would have been hard to assign any one sole blame. Be careful, I wouldn't want you to get be hurt. I nodded, gave the rocks one last look and turned to start walking again. Just then, a golden glint hit my eye. I went over to where I saw the glint I started digging. After a few seconds, Mary came over to where I was. Did you find something? I don't. I was going to say I don't know, but I saw myself after I'd found what I was looking for. In my hands was a golden ring. I held it up for Mary to take a look at. It's a ring. I examined it more closely. It was far too light to be made of real gold, and there were scratches where the gold plating was worn off. I held it up so Mary could have a better look, better look at it. It's beautiful. It's not real. Someone took a metal ring and plated gold onto it to make it look nicer. But it's so pretty. If you like it, you can have it. Can I? Sure. Can you put it on for me? I didn't need to answer this as she held out her hand. I took it and slid the ring onto her finger. It was a perfect fit. Thank you. With that, she grabbed my arm, and together we started walking down the beach. Before we knew it, it was dawn, and we found ourselves in the same place where we parted a month ago. Can we stay and watch the sunrise this time? I'm sorry, I can't. Well then, when can I see you again? You can only see me when on the middle of the night fall. Even though I thought she might say this, it still hurt a little to hear it. 
I didn't know how I could go a month without seeing her. How come? Why can't why can't I see you before then? Because I'm a ghost. She said it as if the most obvious thing in the world, as if something, someone telling you that she's a ghost is something that happens every day. Not exactly what to say. I just stood there in silence. Eventually, Mary decided to elaborate on this to tell her story. I became a ghost after I died. I died along with my family in the epidemic that hit this island when I was ten. For some reason, I came back on the island. Back on the night of the full moon, I just found myself here on the island. I came back on the night of of the next full moon and the next, and as far as I know, every, everyone after that. I, was always, I always come back on the night of the full moon. I could do whatever I want that night, but when the sun rises, everything goes dark, and, I sudden, and suddenly it's the next month. It's always been that way for hundreds of years. It was boring for a while, but eventually people came to, back to the island. Once in a while, someone would meet would meet me. Like you did. We talked for a while, but most of them were only interested in talking to me because I was, because I was a ghost. The ghost went, went away after a while. I guess there's only much you can say about it. Come to think of it, you never asked me about it. Didn't you figure it out? Oh no, of course I knew, I had no idea. I had no idea. You didn't, you did not figure it out the first night. So, that's the only reason people ever came back. They'd come and talk to, to the ghost until they lost interest. She had a small laugh and then seemed to realise something. That means you aren't here because I'm a ghost? You came back because you choose to be with me? Once again I was speechless. We stood there for a little while. Finally she broke the silence. The sun's almost up and I need to be going. Don't go. But I grabbed her hand and pulled her close to me. Stay with me and watch the sunrise. We didn't say anything after that. We just stood there hand in hand. Watching the sky slowly brighten. I could feel her left hand in my right as I stood there looking at over the ocean. And then the sun rose and suddenly my right hand was empty. I turned to look but the girl was standing there and was gone. I guess she really is a ghost. I said to no one in particular. She had told me and I believed her. But until she disappeared there was still a little bit of doubt. I spent the morning standing at that cliff thinking about it. And I finally realised it. I realised that it was unnatural for someone like Mary to be trapped for hundreds of years as a ghost, condemned to show up only on the night of the full moon. And despite my feelings for her, I came to the conclusion that the best thing I could do was to help her find peace. I spent the next month doing research in the island's small library. I pulled through every book they had on occult, ghosts, magic, witchcraft, things like that. I read two or three books a day. When I finished a few books the island's library had, I had them order more from the mainland. Got to the point where most of the librarians knew my name, knew knew me by name, and the rest knew me by my reputation as the co college guy obsessed with digging coal. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with those books was that a wh while most of their content was made up, deep under the surface, some contained a small grain of truth. The only way I could figure it out was to read everything I could on the subject, and figure out what it had had in common. On the night of the full moon I was ready to put up, ready to put what I learned into practice. I returned to the spot where we met on the first few nights and watched the ocean waves slowly rolling in. Mary was there waiting for me. You came back. I was going to leave you alone after all that. I shouldn't say anything about this. So what are you going to do tonight? You just spend the, normally I spend the night walking around the island we did the other nights. I see. So may I escort you? Of course. She grabbed my arm and we started off on our customary journey around the island. We didn't talk as much this time. We didn't need to. Just being in each other's presence was enough. The chill in the air contrasted with the warmth of her skin. Who would have thought that a ghost could be warm? We had a few short conversations to pass the time. But mostly we walked in silence. The events of last time weighed heavily on us. As if we were both waiting for the other sh shoe to drop. Finally I couldn't take it anymore and came out right and asked the question I needed to. Mary, is there something you regret never being able to do? The key insight, the kernel of truth that I discovered in all those books, was that the thing that makes a ghost is regret. What do you mean? I don't know, is there something that you wanted to do but you were never able to do? Finally, she's wanting the belly or whisper. I wanted to be a bride. I knew it. I had to come up with a list of things. Mary, because regret. And this was the top of the list. 
She said in a, that her dream was to get married. Heck, her dress even looks like a wedding dress. I don't know if I loved her. There's anything I could do. So I got down on my knee and said, Mary Harper, will you marry me? She was stunned by this and stood there for a few seconds, saying nothing. Finally she spoke. Are you, are you sure? Are you sure you want to marry me? The most sure that I've ever been. Then yes. I got up and we embraced. But she still looked confused. But how can we do it? I can only go out at night. I don't think any minister would marry off a ghost. Don't worry, we can have a common law marriage. Common law? As long as we say we're married and make vows to each other, it counts. Really? We can get married? If you're ready, we can do it right now. I am. Then let's do this. I pulled out my back pocket containing wedding vows that I had prepared. I changed my voice to so I'm minister and can read it. Do you take this woman to be your wedded wife? To have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness or in health, as long as you both exist. In my normal voice, I responded, I do. I turned to Mary and repeated the vow to her. Do you take this man to be your wedded husband, to have and to hold, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness or in health, as long as you both exist? I do. We stood there for a second before I continued. Well, that's it. We're married. What's well, left is a kiss. She came close to me and we embraced. I closed my eyes and waited for her lips. Thank you. I heard the whisper and I felt the warmth of her lips. They touched mine. Then I felt nothing but the but the cool night air. When I opened my eyes, I was alone. Ew! My granddaughter's interruption stopped me telling my story. You kissed someone that wasn't grandma. He married someone that he wasn't grandma. Well, that was before I met your grandmother. In fact, that's how I, f I first met your grandmother. She was working as an intern at the library. After that, I never saw Mary again. She seems unconvinced. Was that really a true story? You have my word. She thinks back for a few seconds before replying. I don't believe you. Tell me another story. Not tonight. It's after your bedtime. But, no buts. Now it's time to get to sleep. I turned the lights so that she could finally go to bed. If I didn't, then my granddaughter would stay up all night and never go to sleep. My granddaughter Mary, whose name I suggested to my son-in-law while we were waiting in the hospital. My granddaughter named for, for the girl I was married to for a few moments on a moonlit beach long ago. And then three moments for moments. Well, that's not a bad, shit, bad game, actually. It's nice and short, and it's a weird story. It's like, weird? Oh, that's like a weird. It's sort of, it's nice and short and it's, I don't know, it's just, it's just nice. It's a nice short thing and it's, thank you for playing, thank you for creating the game. So guys, that was Moonlight Walks. If you enjoyed me playing this visual novel and want me to read more, then just say so below. Even suggest some to me. Don't suggest Katawa Shoujo. I've replayed that. I've done all the endings and everything. So yeah. I'll see you guys in the next visual novel I'll play. Until next time.